If I tell you that a routine delivery turned into a £1.2 million heist involving the double crossing of one of Liverpool's most powerful crime groups, and this was used to track them down. While the onlookers resented it as a brutal yet routine burglary, the police knew there was more to it than met the eye. These are the most pressing questions of an enigma that left both the civilians and the local crime groups filled with trepidation, involving four thugs, the notorious Cox brothers, Jason and Craig, villain Richard Caswell and Ben Monks Gorton. This thrilling saga came straight from a Guy Ritchie movie. Let's dive into it. The fake delivery heist. Who's behind the £1.2 million coke caper? On May the 23rd, 2020, a delivery man entered a house on Croxdale Road West, Liverpool, carrying a box wearing special outfits. It was the first lockdown of the pandemic and this would have been an ordinary delivery had three other men not snuck up behind the delivery man. The four men burst into the house, catching a father and son off guard. They targeted the father with a machete, causing severe injuries. The wound could have been life-threatening if medical assistance wasn't provided on time. The son panicked and requested an ambulance. That these lads just came into the house and started stabbing me dad. And there's blood everywhere. Within three minutes, the four men grabbed a package and darted away in their van. To an outsider, this might seem like a typical horrifying burglary in a family home. However, this family home served as a stash house for a major Liverpool organised crime group. The stolen package was a stash of coke worth a striking £1.2 million. The delivery driver was Monks Gorton and the other three men were Jason Cox, Lee Cox and Richard Caswell. Fortunately, a CCTV camera captured the thugs arriving in a van outside the house. The men were also caught returning to the van minutes later, putting the stolen product in the back and making off. However, it wasn't the sole piece of evidence that would incriminate the villainous heisters. During the scene, Monks Gorton dropped the Covid mask at the house, but the criminals didn't worry about him being caught on the CCTV footage, as Monks was from Burnley and nobody would recognise him here. This mask eventually led the police to Monks Gorton through DNA evidence, implicating all the perpetrators. Notably, while the DNA had already implicated Monks Gorton, the remainder of the gang and the entire narcotic distribution network were uncovered via cracked, encrypted messages. But much unfolded before the climax. Recognising the windfall from the heist, valued at £1.2 million worth of cocaine, the criminals opted to sell the stolen goods right away to another notorious gangland figure, Leon Atkinson, who dispatched an associate to collect the package. The exchange took place near Manchester City's training ground. This thug's tale adds another intriguing layer to our collection of thrilling sagas, demonstrating that no matter how long it takes, the law's long reach eventually ensnares you. Leon Atkinson had been on the police's radar for some time, believed to be the head of a Tameside organised crime group. However, they lacked the concrete evidence to tie him to his crimes. Then, unexpectedly, a seemingly innocuous detail, a smiling selfie, proved to be his downfall. Yes, a charming selfie of Leon Atkinson savouring a beer and beaming in a garden on a sunny day during lockdown. Imagine believing yourself to be untouchable and smuggling millions of pounds worth of cocaine around the UK only to be caught due to a selfie. Atkinson wasn't unfamiliar to law enforcement. He stood trial alongside infamous criminal Dale Cregan over a decade ago. Cregan was accused of eliminating two police officers, Nicola Hughes and Fiona Bone, as well as David Short and his son Mark. However, in 2013, Atkinson was cleared of the charges, while Cregan received a whole life sentence for four eliminations. Despite Atkinson's active involvement in illicit activities, law enforcement couldn't find evidence against him for 10 years until his selfie was discovered in April 2020. The incriminating picture showed Atkinson in his garden sporting a red Armani t-shirt. The selfie was shared with a leading member of another gang and law enforcement stumbled upon it while combing through the gang's cracked encrypted network. 
the conversations revealed nicknames like Carrot Horn, Maiden Bear, Mr. Smallhead, Festive Ape and Shaggy Farmer. The recovered image helped police trace him to the Carrot Horn, Maiden Bear aliases, proving he was the head of a narcotics ring that smuggled over a staggering £9 million worth of cocaine in just three months. Additionally, police found letters from Dale Cregan at Atkinson's house. In 2022, Atkinson was sentenced to 15 years in jail. Now, returning to the Stash House heist, an incident that shook citizens for a long time. How did the four thugs pull off the heist? How did they know they would find cocaine in that house? It all began when Caswell agreed to purchase narcotics from the gang. Manchester Evening News reported that he was approached by a member of the Liverpool firm who asked if he could sell for cash. This implied the firm wanted Caswell to find a cash buyer for cocaine rather than selling on credit. Caswell saw this as an opportunity to deceive the firm. He inquired about the price of the haul, which was £41,000. The package would need to be collected from Liverpool, setting the stage for one of the most audacious heists targeting a crime group itself. Caswell agreed to buy the product, but his real intention was to ascertain the location of the stash house. The thugs placed a tracking device on the courier's car, revealing the stash house's location. Although it appeared to be a normal family home, it acted as a hub where the Liverpool firm stored large quantities of narcotics. Notably, the father-son duo omitted this detail from their accounts before the police of the attack heist. Nonetheless, Caswell informed the others. We will need the stash, cautioning the Cox brothers that they had to get it right as it was a risky endeavour. Yet, their plan left them unsatisfied. They conducted several dummy runs to the house before executing the actual heist. Following the robbery, the Liverpool firm sought Caswell's assistance. This indicated the level of trust the firm had in him. However, it was a perilous game Caswell was playing. He offered to help them identify the culprits behind the heist. While it took the firm some time to realise that the Cox brothers were responsible for the theft, this only further incensed them. According to the police, this incident had far-reaching implications for all the crime groups in the North West. But how did the Cox brothers and Caswell know each other well enough to collaborate in deceiving a powerful organised crime group? The answer? Caswell had met one of the Cox brothers within the prison system. You'll find many gangland friendships beginning in prison, a place where they are supposed to be rectifying their behaviours. Isn't it ironic? Nonetheless, he cautioned the siblings that they were deceiving the most powerful narcotics crew in Liverpool. This demonstrated their awareness of the risks involved, even to their lives. However, greed proved to be a stronger motivator than fear for one's life. At one point, Jason Cox confided in his brother, expressing his readiness to drive to Liverpool and empty a clip into the leader of the Liverpool firm. EncroChat Crackdown. How did authorities close in on the heisters? How did the sun set on Cox and Caswell's nefarious operations? Investigations into heist and many other criminal operations underwent a significant breakthrough when the French police hacked the server supporting the EncroChat phone network. This development provided them with access to messages sent by professional criminals across Europe. The police took it up under their own Operation Venetic. They finally obtained concrete evidence of the entire conspiracy when they breached the EncroChat conversations between the individuals involved. Caswell and the Cox brothers utilised Encro phones to orchestrate the heist and facilitate the sale of the product. Caswell operated under the Encro handle Lynx Basil, while Jason Cox used the handles Nova Belt and Urban Rifle, and Lee Cox used Marine Ivory. Detective Inspector Roger Smethurst of Greater Manchester Police's GMP, Serious and Organised Crime Group, remarked, Operation Venetic provided invaluable insight into their multi-kilo narcotic dealing and other criminal operations, including a brutal robbery in Liverpool. Operation Venetic, a nationwide crackdown led by the National Crime Agency, 
NCA, intercepted the criminal use of Encro Chat, enabling Greater Manchester Police, GMP, to apprehend over 200 individuals and seize over £2.5 million in cash, dozens of firearms, over 1,100 rounds of ammunition, over 12 kilos of Class A narcotics and 25 kilos of Class B narcotics, as well as over £300,000 worth of assets, including luxury jewellery and vehicles. Out of the 200 individuals, 150 have been charged with various offences, ranging from narcotics to money laundering. Following the acquisition of the necessary data, the police arrested Craig Cox at his residence. However, they encountered difficulties as Lee, Jason and Richard Caswell were on the run after the raid to apprehend them. Ultimately, law enforcement managed to locate them first. Caswell was apprehended in a £1 million rented apartment in Centurion Building on Chelsea Bridge Wharf. The police also discovered £98,000 in cash, a Rolex watch and a passport in the apartment. In August 2020, authorities located Monks Gorton at the Village Hotel in Bury. While these arrests marked progress, there was still work to do. Jason and Lee Cox were hiding in Spain, but it was only a matter of time as the Spanish police arrested them in 2021 in Alicante when they tried to smash their way out of a traffic jam. But it turned out that the Cox brothers would go to any length to avoid retribution for their actions. While in custody in Alicante, the police found ropes and saw blades in Lee's cell. It appeared that there was a plan for him to escape. After this astonishing discovery, the thug was moved to a high security prison in Madrid. The Encro chat messages showed Jason asking the older brother, Lee Cox, if he wanted a kilo for free. After that had tracked them up and had to chop up badly in his gaff. If you think that's egregious, you'll be shocked to know what they were planning next. Emboldened by the audacious heist, the gangsters were planning to kidnap rival's schoolgirl daughter for a ransom of £2 million while posing as cops. A conversation on the encrypted phone network, EncroChat, revealed this chilling plot being discussed between the criminal Richard Caswell and villain Jason Cox. Cox's text read as, Not much, just bought a pedal bike. Would you be up for a kidnapping? Caswell told Cox. When the lockdown over and they start working again, we kidnap Ladsbird's daughter. We want two mil. They get 100 kilograms at a time. Cox replied that they just needed a car with blue lights on so they could pretend to be police officers, approach her and bundle her into the vehicle. So, that was the plan, to throw the girl in the back of a fake police car and then demand ransom. Caswell was attacked in 2022 at Strangeways Prison in Manchester. A large group of lags burst into his cell, targeted his neck with a sharp object. The Liverpool firm knows that he was the key to pulling off this heist. The Sun cited a source. Caswell is the superstar here, managing to get himself locked up along with some of Liverpool's finest. He is a walking disaster zone. They should build a special prison just for him. Although the major orchestrators of the heist are believed to be the Cox brothers, it wouldn't have been possible without Caswell's help. He had inside knowledge of the potential size of the hall. According to the DI Smethurst, he knew that they had multi-kilos of narcotics at their stash house. The two people who were looking after it had not come to the attention of the police. They did not draw attention to themselves. The gang followed the courier and saw him go to the stash house. They worked it out. Then on May 23rd, carried out the robbery, having removed the tracking device from the courier's car the night before. During the robbery, the thugs forced the father-son duo into the garden where the product was hidden in a storm drain. They sold half of the 30 kilograms quickly right after the heist to a Manchester criminal. The police believed that the money from the sale was split between the two Cox brothers and Caswell. They had brought Monks Gorton for muscle and he was paid in cash for accompanying them. Interestingly, the man they had brought in for the muscle proved to be the source of their downfall. The police gathered from the messages between the thugs that they were using a storage unit in Bury. Another discovery was the main courier for the Cox brothers, named Michael Nevin, who had a flat in Fallowfield. 
Nevin carried the 10 kilogram stash for sale to a Manchester-based gang. He described himself as a gangster transporter and was a trusted courier of the Cox OCG. The police searched Nevin's home and caught him hiding in the cellar with his iPhone in one hand and the Encro chat device in the other. The officers seized over £28,000 in cash, a food bag of pot, weighing scales with Class A narcotics residue on them, and handwritten notes that included amounts owed by the customers of illicit products. The same day, the officers searched a storage unit in Bury, where they discovered around £30,000 worth of coke stolen from the Liverpool firm, money counter and scales. How did the police know that the coke was part of the product stolen from the Liverpool OCG? It had the same stamp as that of the stolen product. Slowly and gradually the police got their hands on the other members of the group as well. Pot dealer Jack Brownsill was tracked down. It was only a while before Jason and Lee Cox would be extradited from the Spanish town of Alicante where they were arrested in July 2021 whilst driving a hire car. Then came the arrest of Michael Martin from Lower Broughton who was involved in the conspiracy. He was sentenced to three years in jail in 2021 for money laundering. Whereas the courier Michael Nevin was sentenced to nine years, eight months in April 2022, he admitted conspiracy to supply coke and pot and possess criminal property. He didn't participate in the heist. His role entailed carrying the stash right before the heist. According to his lawyer, Nevin had no clue the coke was stolen in a robbery. However, in some Encro chat messages, he complained about the meagre reward he received for his work. Another thug, who was one of the key players in the heist, Ben Monks Gordon, admitted conspiracy to commit robbery and was sentenced to six years in 2022. Then came Jack Brownsill, who denied conspiracy to supply pot, possess criminal property and being involved in supplying pot, got convicted of all three offences in 2022. He got a sentence of four years and three months sentence. Now coming to the sentences of the big guns. Craig Cox was sentenced to 13 years and six months in jail. He pleaded guilty to conspiracy to supply narcotics, possess criminal property and commit robbery. He also admitted two breaches of a serious crime prevention order. The other Cox brother, Lee, was sentenced to eight years for admitting conspiracy to supply narcotics and possess criminal property whereas associate Richard Caswell was jailed for seven years for conspiracy to supply narcotics, possess criminal property and commit robbery. Who is the thug Richard Caswell? Can you imagine one of the quiet lads of the estate becoming a notorious underworld villain? Enter Richard Caswell. Now, that's quite unusual. Typically, criminals are associated with a history of violence or anger issues. However, this one had a reputation for being exceptionally polite. A former barrister described him as one of the most polite clients he had ever met in the 30 years of practice. But behind his polite exterior, Caswell had a cunning, scheming mind, a cold ruthlessness and an apparently boundless inclination for risk. Caswell was better known as Will Young, because of his resemblance to the pop star. He worked as a doorman before turning into a high-level narcotic dealer. After getting jailed for the stash house burglary, he became a target in prison. He had double-crossed the Liverpool firm, whose name cannot be mentioned due to legal reasons. Swindling a powerful organised crime group doesn't bode well for anyone, but taking risks was only second nature to this thug. Caswell made headlines for being involved in a vicious underworld feud between the city's club owners, and it wasn't an ordinary feud with a spate of tit-for-tat shootings or arson attacks. The clubland row was being fought with car bombs created by stuffing industrial fireworks into cheap stolen motors. These cheap yet lethal devices would explode across the city in 2003 and 2004, holding the city's peace hostage on the go. The court was told that Caswell wasn't involved in the feud initially, he became a party in the feud after the first explosion outside the popular 051 Club in the city centre in 2003. Caswell held a grudge against the then owner of the club, John Lynch, for sacking him from work. He used to work for the club owner as a doorman before Lynch fired him due to an assault charge. Now with this feud, he got the chance to get back at his ex-employer. 
Eager to assist Lynch's enemies, he was linked to three massive blasts. The first one happened in October 2003 in Sandfield Park, West Derby, outside the home of Lynch's brother. The news reports covering the incident showed pieces of the vehicle embedded in the ceiling of nearby houses and shattered windows. The incident left six homes damaged, one of which needed over £12,000 in structural repairs. According to one local, cited by the Mirror, that bomb terrified us all. This is a nice quiet street. Nobody expected something like that. But they didn't know the horror didn't stop with it. The next day, another incident rocked Bulford Road, Fazakali, near another address linked to Lynch's brother. This spate of violence led to an investigation codenamed Operation Thornapple by Merseyside Police. It included a call to limit the sale of fireworks at the national level. However, the violence not only continued but grasped the police stations under its ambit too. In May 2004, another enormous detonation happened outside West Derby Road Police Station in Tewbrook. It was the biggest one to happen on the British mainland since the IRA ceasefire. The brazen attack on the police led the senior officers warning residents nearby police stations to be on guard. However, these tactics couldn't deter the law enforcement from cracking down on the criminals. The detectives conducted DNA analysis of the twisted wreckage of the vehicles used in the attacks, which matched Caswell. He was arrested, and to add to his troubles, the police found a cache of weapons from his house in Newman Street, Sandhills. Caswell admitted driving the cars stuffed with fireworks to the scene, but claimed that someone else had ignited them. While the thug was remanded in custody, he didn't sit idle. He was plotting his escape. In March 2004, prison officers at HMP Liverpool spotted a cherry picker close to the perimeter walls of the jail. They found it suspicious and raised the alarm. At the same time, Caswell went missing. However, the escape attempt was futile and he was detained in the prison grounds and was isolated subsequently. He got his sentence in April 2005 for 17 years. The court was told that he was not the brains of the operation, but rather a gopher acting on the involved gangster's orders. Nevertheless, his lengthy jail sentence couldn't stop Caswell from becoming a well-connected and sophisticated criminal. His messages on EncroChat revealed he was dealing with multi-kilo quantities of smack and coke. Moreover, his well-connectedness was famous, as the hoods of the crime group he double-crossed deemed him to be a resource that would connect them with other buyers of wholesale quantities of glass and narcotics. His chats with Jason Cox left no doubt about his ruthlessness and casual attitude towards using violence. When Cox asked him if a courier for the Liverpool firm would lead them to the narcotics, Caswell said that he was willing to eliminate him if the need arose. In another chat, he asked Cox if he was up for a kidnapping. That was in reference to a plot to kidnap a rival gangster's daughter. Who are the notorious Cox brothers? Unlike Caswell, the Cox brothers had a knack for troublemaking since their early years. They belonged to a strong Salford crime family. Lifetime troublemakers Craig and Jason Cox were slapped with ASBOs at the age of 12 and 15 respectively. They made headlines over two decades ago for receiving some of the first antisocial behaviour orders. Notably, the ASBOs were initiated by Tony Blair and the two brothers were among the first few to receive them in 2001. The adolescent duo had been terrorising their neighbourhood for almost a year by damaging property, using abusive language and threatening residents. To name the brothers publicly, Salford Council requested the reporting restrictions to be lifted at court. Manchester Evening News reported that Jason was among 20 youngsters who threw explosives at fire crews as they dealt with a burning car on Albion Fields or weather pitch in Broughton. Whereas, Craig caused mayhem at school and was expelled, he was intimidating pupils and teachers. He was also seen with a replica weapon at Broughton Recreation Centre. He pulled down steel shutters on a classroom and locked in a teacher. But that's not the end of his violent activities in school. The day he returned to school after his suspension, he headbutted a pupil and threw seats from a bus's top deck to the lower deck. The brothers were from Higher Broughton. Because of their activities, they were banned indefinitely from some areas of Lower Broughton, including Camp Street, Mocker Parade 
and Albion High School. The ASBO prohibited them from congregating in groups of six or more near their home, using threatening or abusive language, drinking alcohol outdoors, intimidating anyone or carrying anything that could be used as a weapon. However, the notoriety wasn't limited to the two brothers. The entire family was threatened with eviction from their council property, but moved to a house nearby owned by a private landlord. Nevertheless, the Asbos couldn't divert the brothers' path towards a life of crime. Both faced long prison sentences after the Stash House heist. Craig's name appeared in the police records again in 2016. He was one of the three men who smashed up a police car during a 110 mile an hour chase. In the end, the police vehicle was so badly damaged that officers were unable to continue with the chase. The men also couldn't retain control of the car, which eventually crashed into a garden on Woodford Road. They fled from the scene. Later, the police searched the crash car and discovered materials showing the men were planning to explode an ATM machine and steal cash. They were jailed for six years in 2017, including Craig. According to Detective Inspector Roger Smethurst, the Cox family are a long-standing Salford-based organised crime gang. They are quite notorious, four brothers. Through data, we identified three of the brothers being involved in large-scale supply of Class A and Class B narcotics and two being linked to nasty robbery in the Merseyside area, which was narcotics-related. He added, A family enterprise. They didn't need to align themselves with any other factions in Salford. They were able to support themselves in Salford through their notoriety. Before this, the Cox family had been linked to robberies and aggravated burglaries. While talking about the need to align, the detective is referring to a long-standing gang feud that has led many to take sides. However, the Cox family didn't need to take any because apparently they were able to survive in their own entity. According to the detective, they have such notoriety that other people are prepared to offend with them on the basis that the Coxes will lead. Removing that hierarchy will have a significant impact on the wider community. Another notable characteristic of the Cox brothers is that they weren't flash with their ill-gotten gains. They didn't boast any lavish cars or houses. Their criminal enterprise was bringing them enough money to sustain a nice lifestyle, but not a lavish one. The brothers were living in reasonable properties. Jason had moved to Warrington, while Craig and Lee still lived in Salford. According to the police, they were storing hefty amounts of money at family members' houses. The robbery was their big payday. But wait, we haven't told you about another Cox, the Cox sister, Samantha. The Cox sister was a member of the family business. She was jailed for five years and five months in 2022 for conspiracy to supply smack and coke. Samantha stood out from her brothers in her appreciation for luxury items indulging in designer clothes and high-end cars. She managed a beauty salon named Miami Glow in Littleton Road. However, its modest turnover couldn't support her lavish lifestyle. To cover her expenses, she engaged in narcotics dealing, allowing her to afford a Range Rover, a Porsche Macan valued at approximately £50,000, and a collection of luxury goods, including designer clothes, shoes and other items worth over £30,000. Coming back to the startling robbery, it proved to be the downfall of the Cox OCG, according to many. But how the situation will evolve and whether the walls of prisons will be strong enough to withhold the nefarious activities of the brothers remains to be seen. The brothers would still be young enough to fall back to their criminal life. Nevertheless, the arrest of the Cox brothers is highly significant. It is considered a major blow for criminal networks within Salford. While the Cox OCG is believed to have been smashed, the Liverpool OCG is expected to retaliate against the deceit. The police believe that the firm wouldn't forget in a hurry how the thugs pulled one over on them, and there will be ramifications for years to come. Detective Smethurst said that the ramifications will be not only for the prison system in how they manage these people within the prison network to try and keep them safe, but also in terms of the wider family. We do know that once the Liverpool OCG found out about the Cox's involvement, there were then a number of arson incidents in Salford against vehicles and premises linked to the Cox family while Jason and Lee were in Spain. Greater Manchester Police, GMP, issued several threats of life warnings to people concerned. 
they have been preparing for further potential retribution and working closely with the prison service. While many things remain uncertain in this situation, one thing is for sure that the Cox brothers will be looking over their shoulders for a long time.